is I permanent? What, is, what does permanent mean? You see? If the word permanent exists, existed as permanent as what it meant, as boom, that camera shot. So that camera shot that fixed everything is all you would experience the whole of your life. Being that camera shot, that permanent fixture. Permanence is what we call to our beingness is I want to remain here permanently and I'm, but I'm quite happy to change, you see. I want to remain here permanently but I'm quite happy to change. I, want to, I don't want to be here permanently as the same thing, as the same moment, as the same time because that's death, you see, that's fixed. That's non-moving. And this simple way of looking at what permanence is gives you an understanding of what life is. The permanence in life, that fixed, non-moving image, is the change. You see? But that change never ceases to begin nor end. Therefore, it appears permanent. So when you look for permanence, you're not looking for that complete one and only moment of fixed, non-moving, non-experiencing, you're looking for permanence, for no beginning, no end. You're looking for infinite life. And that what you're looking for, that what you're looking for is where you're looking from. That's the only beauty of awakening, of enlightenment, is to understand the permanence of you has no fixed point. No beginning, no end, just moving. Moving, described as the body, moving, moving, moving. That double-edged sword, are you moving? Physically or emotionally? Both. And both simultaneously work together. Can you say, I'm so in love without the body responding? Even if you try and say it inside, there's something that the body itself changes. It's so subtle. It can mean the muscles stop projecting, forming. They just cease to kind of ground. But most say it. I experience so much love. The love inside and the love outside become one. The mind is confused. The mind spends its whole life confused. Because that ridiculous ego mind state says they are opposites. Permanence and temporary or stable and moving. You see? I said in a previous video, the teacher at school says to the children, let's play statues and they all stand still. But there's nothing stable. Everything is moving. Their blood is still moving. The actual movement between that shakiness, that emotional excitement, that adrenaline, that fear, it creates movement. But we think, our mind thinks there's something absolutely fixed and permanent. Of course there is. The point where looking and life, that door that Assisi and Rumi talks about, 
you look in the mirror and if you see your body non-moving you start panicking <laughs> and if you move and the body in the mirror stops moving you start you get worried your mind starts thinking I'm dead everything I do I feel as if I'm moving but I'm still I'm fixed so the door that most or the few that are fortunate to open this door see I was looking from the inside but I don't go through I turn around accept this awakening accept this enlightenment accept this revelation and I move back into the moving no fear no worries because that what is beyond the door that apparent permanence that fixed image that whole non-moving what we would call non-interesting boring death blackness if you want to call it cannot maintain that permanence it's like the the tree if the tree is knocked down the roots keep going and another tree comes through you dig a hole you dig all the grass all the turf all the clean it out everything everything clean all weeds everything pure soil and within days the weeds appear the grass whatever you try to erase it returns we cannot be permanent We cannot be fixed, we cannot be stable. Consciousness, that stability, it's like the, the best way to describe it. And I think this is the most um, revelational experience that this speaker ever had was the maple. When this voice said on the question, where am I looking from in this what it said the maple as consciousness or ribbons where am I looking from and as what so I'm looking from the maple as ribbons as consciousness the maple is stable it's rigid the ribbons are emotions and moving physically, mentally, psychologically, emotionally. So if I'm looking from the maple as the ribbon of consciousness, what one am I? So when the body, the ribbon, falls off or ceases to operate, you move to that fixed point. But from the window, as the observer, you realize, even without a ribbon, even without consciousness, I can witness all other ribbons, all consciousness, all types from the maple that I is. So even as that permanent, even as that image, that two-dimensional photograph that you take of yourself and say that I want to go into that photograph and be that still looking person. And I don't want to move and I don't want to change ever again. You can, ex you can stop experiencing moving physically, emotionally, psychologically. But you see the world and everything in it, the universe, the galaxies, everything from that point of stillness. And this is enlightenment. The discovery that you're not only the physical, emotional movement, but you are the stability. The witness, the point of witnessing is not from the moving, changing, physically, emotionally, psychologically, body or mind. You are witnessing from a point, a place, that image, but experiencing as whatever we are at the same time. It's incredible. You know, science wants to prove a human through a human mind, a human construct, 
human machinery, human telescopes and whatever it is, and go into the universe and understand. And it goes in in a moving vessel with a moving body. And what it's going to find is movement. It's not going to find stillness. Because the stillness of all is within all. So you have to go to the core, the center of the earth, the axis, to understand what is going on outside and inside. To travel through the universe, you're only going to find more emotions, more movement, more physical movement, more psychological movement, until you go into the core of that what is looking. The earth is looking at the universe as a, as an, a form. Where is it looking from? Is it looking from the, the mountains? It's looking from its source. I was always fascinated by that movie, Journey to the Center of the Earth as a Child. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go in, dig down into this spacecraft and go into the center of the Earth. And I did. Well, my body became the Earth. So go into the core of everything. And what you find is what Christ says. What you find, when you lift up the stone, I will be there. When you break down the stone into small pieces in the center, I will be there. The mind wants to look for something, an object. It wants to look for an experience. It wants to look for an activity, a movement. It wants to look for something that is never seen before, never touched, never smelt, never tasted, never felt before. But it's within the searching into the center of the earth, into the center of the body, into, into the center of the atom or the molecule. Beyond the moving, beyond the form and the formlessness, truly is. We either want one or the other. In deep sleep, I'm happy with permanent stillness when no dreams appear. When I wake up, I want to be, feel and experience and emotionally encounter my senses the external world, nature, my internal world. We have a body that separates the two. When the eyes and all the emotions shut down, it appears as if we're in a different world. And when we wake up in the morning, when everything opens up, we appear to be in that subsequent other world. That's why we speak about the afterlife and this life. But we are appearing the deep sleep right now as stillness, as stability, looking out into our moving and sensational, essential and touching, feeling, sensory, tasting, loving body and loving world. And through this we create opposites, we create good and bad. The idea to go into the center of you is to remove all opposites. Remove the difference between man and woman, pain and pleasure, good and bad. Remove all identities that make separation. Me, the body and the world. Not this, not that. Remove every thought, every idea, every fantasy, every imagination, every piece of information, every knowledge, every every encounter, every experience, remove past, remove future, remove time. You can't remove them, you just have to push them aside and look into the center of the earth, the center of God, the center of consciousness. All of these are the center of you, the center of 